Aaron, you told me you talk to large customers about their challenges in the cloud. Yes, and there is one challenge that all these customers want guidance on, regardless of their cloud maturity. Oh, what's that? Well, it relates to technical issues, but the challenge they face is actually strategic. So, Aaron, uh, before we dig into this challenge, what's your role at Google? Sure. I'm a cloud operations advocate, and I talk with large customers all the time about how to run reliable workloads in the cloud. Now, many of these customers are moving their practices to align with Site Reliability Engineering, or SRE. What is this Site Reliability Engineering? Well, there are many different definitions, but I like the one from Google's SRE handbook. SRE is what happens when you ask a software engineer to design an operations team. Uh, how would a software engineer design an operations team? Well, think about how software engineers approach a problem. They focus on efficiency, usually by automating repetitive tasks. They invest time into project work, and they avoid toil where possible. Makes sense. Does it work? Well, the desired outcome with SRE is to improve the system for stakeholders instead of babysitting the infrastructure. The more you automate the infrastructure, the more time you free up for engineers. That means they get even more time to automate the infrastructure and so on. I call it the SRE virtuous cycle. The result is a more reliable system, happier engineers, happier users, and better outcomes. All right, uh, SRE makes sense. Uh, you said there was a challenge that all customers want your guidance on. Uh, what is that challenge? Right, it's alerting. So many customers have too many alerts and they're looking for rules of thumb to reduce the noise without missing anything important. And as simple as my advice may be, I have seen cases where it could save a team months of pain. Yep, I've definitely seen systems that send too many alerts uh, back when I worked in startups. Uh, but how do you actually fix that? So first, I think we would need to clarify the relevance of what we're monitoring to our desired outcomes. Sounds like a good start. Uh, and then next, we need to think about what should happen when we send an alert. Who gets the alert? What actions do they take? Are they responsible for notifying other people? Putting our SRE hat back on, could the response just be automated instead? All right. Uh, so you mentioned relevance and outcomes. Uh, let's address each of them and let's be specific about the method, how to, how to make it work. So first, relevance. Um, how can I tell if an alert is relevant or not? Well, a good rule of thumb is simply this. Does the alert warn us about something that will affect the main purpose of a system? And what do you mean by purpose? Excellent question. So for a retail store, it's selling items. For a driver services website, it's processing vehicle registrations. For a nonprofit organization, it could be to educate readers on a topic. Got it. And does this purpose include the user experience? Yes, absolutely. So user experience is a key part of many different types of purposes. For example, users might abandon our web app or mobile app if it's too slow. So yes, we do care. So let's say I have a system sending alerts today, uh, or I'm building a new system and I'm planning what alerts to send. How should I think about relevance? Well, for any event that you're thinking to alert on, consider, does this event affect my purpose? And if it doesn't, don't send an alert. But if it does, ask, can it be automated? Only if the event affects your purpose and the response isn't already automated, send the alert to a person. So let's say I have a workload on Cloud Run, and let's say I'm currently sending alerts when individual containers crash. Uh, is that a good approach? What should I do? You know, I see this tendency a lot, especially in operations cultures that are just starting to transition to the cloud or to SRE practices. And here's what I'd say. If you actually need to alert when an individual resource fails, there's a good chance your operations are very brittle. Instead, lean on automation like failover. And with Cloud Run, Google handles failover by default. Uh, then you won't have to alert whenever an individual container crashes. Instead of alerting on individual containers, alert on what users experience. So what if built-in automation, like you mentioned Cloud Run failovers, what if they can't handle some errors that happen in our system? So if it's a common or previously known issue, you can configure Google Cloud Monitoring to trigger actions through webhooks or PubSub to automate your own custom response. You should check out notification policies.
Okay, and uh, that leaves us with focusing on the users. And tell me more about that. Right. In this case, we should alert on the service, not so much the resources. Alerting on status codes would be relevant to us. Um, if most requests start returning an error code 500, there's clearly an issue that our users are feeling. And does this idea relate to service level objectives, SLOs? Yes. So in Google Cloud Monitoring, you can explicitly set alerts based on the SLOs that you make. I see. Uh, so if resources are failing sort of behind the scenes, it may not matter. It only matters if users have a bad experience at the service level. That's right. See, we're shifting focus from many possible causes to a few actual symptoms. Oh, I like that. Many possible causes, few actual symptoms. Yeah, yeah, fewer symptoms. Great. All right, that makes sense. So that covers the first part, relevance. But you also mentioned outcomes of alerts. Uh, tell me more about that, Aaron. Sure. So let's look at an everyday communication for inspiration. So you know the expression, this meeting should have been an email. <laughs> yep, yep. I think we can all relate. Well, sometimes a 3 a.m. paging alert could have been a 9 a.m. ticket. So we need to ask, should we be waking up our on-call engineers in the middle of the night for an issue that's not harming any customers or that our automation is already handling? Makes sense. And then only send the alert to the person who should act. Trust that person to decide to notify other people if they need it. That'll reduce the overall burden on the whole team. So let's see how this applies. Uh, in, in my example, I had a Cloud Run service and we decided no more alerting on individual containers crashing. Let's look at what the user cares about. The traffic is flowing, is returning something else than 500 errors uh, the majority of times. Now, in this example, who do I notify when there's a problem and what do I expect them to do? Remember our idea of ranking impact. If there's no traffic at all, I page someone and say, look into this now. If there's all 500s, same thing. See, these are critical impact events. I need the person on call to see if they can determine the cause. And I usually have some steps in the form of something like a playbook um, that we plan out in advance. For example, step one, check that Google Cloud is not reporting any issues. Step two, check that the load balancer is active. Step three, check for recent deployments and so forth. Got it. A playbook makes perfect sense. I, I wish I had that back in the day. How else can we make life easier for the person receiving the alert? Well, when you're creating alerting policies in Google Cloud Monitoring, add context to, to the alert to make it more useful to the person on call. So in addition to playbooks, you could add severity levels as labels. You could use templates that reference metadata, such as the project or the region. The person on call doesn't have to kind of guess or figure these things out. The Google Cloud Monitoring docs actually show you how to do this, by the way. Ah, great. Uh, I will include the link to those docs in the video description. Uh, all right, so you mentioned paging, uh, like using a beeper in the 1990s? Well, not quite, mostly. Uh, but with Google Cloud Monitoring, you can send alerts through SMS, Slack, or PagerDuty, and you can use PubSub or webhooks to send notifications to another system outside Google Cloud. And now, what about the less urgent, but still important issues? Well, for those issues, I would have the alert create a ticket instead of paging someone. But if it goes to a ticket, won't it get worked on like a much later or, or perhaps even not at all? Good point. But the engineer on call may be able to work on the ticket during their shift. See, the paging is there for interruptions. So if you use paging sparingly, engineers can spend most of their time working on tickets or ideally on project work to reduce toil. Ah, very good. All right, let's recap. What can I do to improve alerting in my system today? Alerts should be relevant to the system's purpose and what your users feel. They should only be sent if the response isn't automated. And you should try to send alerts for the service, not the underlying infrastructure, as much as possible. And if it does need to go to a person, who do you notify? Right. So if the situation requires an immediate response, page the person on call. If it's less urgent, consider creating a ticket instead of paging someone. So you only notify the people or the person you intend to act in response. And then you trust them to inform more people if needed. And in Google Cloud Monitoring, you can use the notification policies to reach people directly or through external tools. You can add context to your alerts, like links to playbooks, severity labels, and details about the failing service. Very good. Uh, I'll put the links to these resources in the video description.
Thank you everyone for watching. If I have any questions for Aaron or me, please put them in the comments. Also, let me know if there are other serverless topics that you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.